my name is Bennett, and I will be representing my Google Sites. I may have done bad last time, but this time, I am sure I will do very good. Anyways, starting out, before we get into what arthropods do and what their um, features are, we have to know what arthropods actually are. So basically, arthropods are, are invertebrates, which is the opposite of vertebrates. It, and invertebrates have no spine, but arthropods aren't just a, no aren't simple invertebrates. They also have an exoskeleton, which it which um which is basically a thick layer outside of them, and then they're squishy on the inside, which is a very gross feature, but still a necessary feature if you want to know what these are. Anyways, start. Anyways, um. Starting out, some of the features of these arthropods include, in fact, I can name five of them, open blood circulatory systems, bilateral symmetry, um, exoskeletons, of course, invertebrates, and segmented parts, and not separated like, separate as in they're in different segments, like, like, oh, for example, if humans were segmented, this would be the fist, this would, anyway. Anyways, um, continue. <laughs> Sorry, this off. Anyways, um, continuing on. The anyways, continuing on. Um, uh, some of these creatures include are um, um, uh, insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and uh, and other creatures too. But those and and myropods and hexapods. Anyways, um. Continuing on, uh, and, uh, sorry, um, anyways, um, uh, if you're one, if you're wondering, um, how do they see or how do they communicate, well, they see by, well, most of them see by, well, compound eyes, but then there are some of them that can't see, for example, the worm. The worm crawls around underground, and therefore its sight would be kind of useless. But what they do have is is sen sensory tissue that can sense everything around them. That's why worms come up above the ground and get eaten by birds when it rains. Anyways, um, uh, oh yeah. Anyways, if you're anyways if you're wondering how they communicate, well, um, some of them use body language, and body language isn't just with arthropods. It can be with common household pets. For example, the dog wags its tail when it's happy, which is body language. So it basically communicates without making any noise. And then some of them use chemicals to communicate, and those chemicals are called pheromones that are transmitted into electric signals when they when they reach the um, uh, arthropod that, yeah, anyways, um, when they reach the arthropod, or fellow arthropod, yeah. Um, so, so now I shall scroll down. Oh, look way too far down. And way too far up. Sorry. Give me a second. All right. Anyways. Anyways, um, uh, art. Anyways, um, uh, if you, yeah. if you're wondering, why are these people important again? Or why are these little exoskeletons, exoskeleton friends important again? Well, I have the perfect answer for you. For, for example, the bee. The bee gets a bad rap from its poison, for its poison. In fact, many arthropods are poisonous, like black widows, wasps, and so on. But anyways, um, going back to the bee, the bee is important because it pollinates flowers and it um uh, and um and without pollination, flowers and trees would cease to exist. And that and um uh, continuing on, um uh, well, I'm bringing art. Anyways, um, right, anyways, I will be scroll down now. Let's see. I looked way too far. Anyways, um, if you would look up here, there is the 
life cycle of the ladybug. And um, in this life cycle, there are four stages. In fact, this is probably one of the most covered life cycles on the planet, maybe. And I was like, schools cover them all the time when you want to learn about life cycles in, oh, I don't know, first grade. But anyways, um, enough of that talk. I'm continuing. <coughs> anyways, continuing on uh, the, uh, uh, after, anyways, since you've already seen that, why don't you cover that for us, though? Maybe give yeah. us some of the details on that? Yeah, I know. I was going to. Uh, okay. I just had to scroll down. Okay. All right. So anyways, um, how the life cycle goes is the first stage is the eggs. Once the eggs are, ah, I forgot the word, uh, fertilized, sorry. Um, once the eggs are fertilized by the male and the female, which I will not get into because that would be a taboo subject. Anyways, can, anyways they ha hatch into a larva. And a larva, and a larva is is basically what you would call a baby ladybug, but it it's a bug, so yeah, it isn't called a baby because that's what human um, children are called when they're that little. Anyways, um, anyways, I'm um, continuing on. They once they hatch, they are in something called the larva stage. And during and after, when they're ready to turn into a pupa in the larva stage, they cling to a leaf and they and they molt their skin. All the all the um, um, uh, well then after that it turns into the third stage. Or, oops, third stage, a pupa. A pupa is the stage right before the adult ladybug, which, like I said, four stages. So yeah, that makes sense. Anyways, um. When the, anyways, when the pu the pupas are um, sort of an orange color, not that exact red color yet, but still, but still they um, will become that red color very soon once they decide they want to become an adult ladybug. Anyways, once they do, they cling to a leaf again. They um, uh, they um, uh, use special cells called histoblasts, and that eventually changes them into the adult ladybug. And then when the adult ladybug finds a mate, when they're done becoming a pupa, I mean, I mean, done changing from a pupa to an adult ladybug, when they find a mate, then the eggs appear again and the cycle starts all over. Anyways, continuing on, um, the, here are some pictures of some arthropods. Just your examples. Adult ladybug or weaver spider. I'm not sure what type of crab that is, sorry. And scorpion. But anyways, um, before we get into the classes of arthropods, um, we will, you might want to know, what arthropods should I be avoiding the most? Well, well, um, some of the most poisonous arthropods, in fact, I will name a top five of them. Um, Although they will not be in order from most or least poisonous, they will just be a top five. Anyways, um, the fit for fifth place, brown recluse. Fourth place, black widow spider. Brown recluse and black widow spiders, of course. They're probably one of the most famous um, uh, poisonous spiders. Um, third place, um, third place is uh, scorpions. Um, second place is, uh, sorry, <laughs> it's just taking a second. Uh, you know what, I'll just say some of the poisonous ones are just brown, brown recluses, spiders of course, black widows, another spider, wasps, bees, and scorpions. All the, all the bees are very aggressive, or most are unless you count the African killer bee, or at least I think that's what it's called. Um, and, but wasps are aggressive. Anyways, yeah, if I were actually making a top five of this, that actually went in order from least to most poisonous, bees would probably be last. But anyways, enough of that talk. Now we will move on to the last subject, arthropods. Anyways, this was actually a screenshot because 
I didn't know how to convert, I mean, save a picture on my iPad, which is kind of dumb of me. Anyways, uh, here's a, since it's kind of blurry on the image, well, then I will tell you um, the classes of these arthropods. Anyways, there are five main classes. Hexapods, myropods, crustaceans, and the one I can't pronounce, but I will try and say anyways, Choco Shellacolata. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you made that one. And the last one, which is extinct, trilobites. Trilobitomorpha. Sorry. I always get those two mixed up. Anyways, um, for the first one, trilobitomorpha, the, um, uh, sorry. Oh, yeah. The, the, all the trilobitomorpha are, of course, extinct, which, which they were in the Cambrian period, which was before dinosaurs, of course. Anyways, um, anyways, um, uh, anyways, um, next, moving on to the, um, uh, Shellacolata, I'm very bad at saying that. <laughs> anyways, um, in the Shellacolata, there are spiders, um, uh, spiders, um, uh, come on, bring it up. Horseshoe crabs, which is a surprise because you'd think they'd be in Crustacea, but they are in fact in Shellacolata. Again, I'm mispronouncing that. <laughs> anyways, um, uh, what else is in Shellacolata is uh, scorpions and basically any arachnid, ticks, and then next, moving on to Crustacea. Well, it basically is sounds like crustacean because, well, there are crustaceans in it. There are crabs, lobsters, although one crab isn't in there, which is, of course, I mentioned the horseshoe crab. So anyways, crabs, lobsters, shrimp, and many more. Anyways, I'm moving on down to myropods. In myropods, um, there are centipedes and millipedes. You ask, what are the difference? Well, centipedes have less legs, millipedes have more. And also both of these are usually poisonous. Um, anyways, moving down to the final one, hexapod, is where you, hexapod is where you would expect to see the flying insects, or well, a lot of flying insects. You have bees, flies, and grasshoppers. Basically any flying insect there. Anyways, scroll down. That is the end of my Google Sites.